Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shen, if you're new here. Today I have a really exciting video. So I am looking at my laptop here because I've made notes in my Notion about stuff that I wanted to talk about. So if you see me look down from time to time, it's because my laptop is here. So I'd say for the past two years, I've been in such a rut when it comes to my style. I think this rut has a lot to do with the relationship that I have with my body. Pause. I understand that this might be triggering for some people. So if at any point you feel uncomfortable watching this video, please exit out. I want to make it very clear that I do not hate my body, but because my weight can go from 60 kilos to almost 50 kilos in the space of a few days, it means that clothes that I was once comfortable in has become now uncomfortable. And that's absolutely okay. So now that we've cleared that up, let's get back to the video. So because of this fluctuation, I would go from being really comfortable in my own skin to being super uncomfortable and just literally dressing like a bum. Recently, the relationship with my body has been a lot more positive. So I've been feeling a lot more comfortable in my own skin, which has really helped me to understand that I don't need to feel like I'm perfect or my body's perfect all the time to be stylish or to put myself together. And this has really kind of helped with the evolution of my style, I'd say. I don't need to be what other people perceive to be as stylish as long as I perceive myself to be stylish. Obviously, I know what things I like and what I don't like, but whether that's my style per se, that's what we're trying to figure out okay so that's what this video is really about so if you're struggling to find what suits you and your body then hopefully this video isn't just entertaining but it's going to be helpful so i wrote down some questions to ask myself questions that's going to really help me to find out what my personal style is I feel like the fit of a piece is really important because it's how your body is going to look in it and if it's not going to be flattering, if it's ill made, not very well tailored, poor quality, then you're not going to feel comfortable in it and if you're not going to be comfortable then you're not going to wear it confidently and it just doesn't make sense. So this is extremely important for me and I think in past times I would just like buy like random things or buy things and because it looks nice or it's trendy and the quality isn't just there and then the next point for me is definitely the shape of something not everything is for me and <laughs> this was a hard one to learn just because something is out and trendy and fashionable doesn't mean that i need to be in it so whether something aligns with my personal style this is also a point that i think is important and then lastly whether it's comfortable now everybody is different but I need to be comfortable in my outfit and it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to wear jogging bottoms but the item itself can't make me feel uncomfortable or I'm not gonna wear it confidently so I'm not gonna buy something that is like say a super high heel and not be able to wear it out comfortably because I know I'm not walking properly in it and I'm just gonna feel like everyone's staring at me because I can't walk in it properly you get what I'm trying to say It was kind of funny because after I made a list of them, I realized how basic they were and it makes sense to what my personal style is, which I'll get onto later on in the video. But the first thing that I have down on my list is like a basic white tee. I love, love, love t-shirts, especially a basic white t-shirt, whether it's fitted or loose, boxy, cropped. I love a white t-shirt. So this was definitely number one on my list. I love a tailored coat. I have so many coats and I've gone through so many coats and I always come back to this kind of structured, tailored, oversized kind of coat. I feel like it's timeless as well. It's something that's not going to ever, ever go out of fashion and I feel like I don't have a quality coat like that yet, so I'm on the hunt for that. Then the third thing on my list is mom jeans. It's actually taken me a while to find out what style of jeans fit me the best and mom jeans and straight leg jeans are the best for my shape and i feel the most comfortable in so this is definitely a staple and a basic for me and then i have a little black dress i think that this is pretty much self-explanatory it's timeless it's something that i can wear to so many different things you know lastly an oversized blazer this is just a staple in my wardrobe this should have really been number one because this is my thing The 
first thing that popped into my head was 90s minimalism. I think that's really my fashion style. I will always come back to this specific fashion style and I think that is what I'm the most comfortable in and the most confident in. I also like like 90s model off duty, um, 90s sitcom, like anything to do with the 90s that's minimal and like chic that is me 100% that's my fashion era and it just inspires me the most outfits like Fran Drescher and CC. even though her style is very I'd say elaborate sometimes borderline flamboyant I just love the 90s feel about it the big poofy hair the mini skirt the stockings the blazer the mini tight form-fitted dress the whole Moschino vibe, I, I'm just in love with it. And even Cece on the show, she had style. Cece had style. My five style icons are all models, which is crazy, but that's what it is. These were who I thought of like instantly at the top of my head, but there might be other people. And I chose them because I think for me, I want to look at somebody that has similar proportions to me because it makes it easier to see what an outfit would look like on me if I can see what it looks like on them. So all of these models have similar proportions to me. That's a tip when you pick your five style icons to pick people with like similar proportions to you whose style that inspires you because it will make it a lot more easier for you to see how a particular style might look on you. Elsa Husk is an absolute street style queen. Like her street style is wicked, okay? She seems to love a suit pants and I love tailored trousers. So her looks always resonate with me. She's so fashionable and so stylish. Might I say all of these women, their makeup and hair is also similar to what I like as well. If you're not new to my channel, then you've probably heard me say how much I love Hailey Bieber's style. Her style is very similar to my style. She's definitely one of my favorites to take street style like references from. And she loves an oversized blazer and a tailored coat. And that's two of my five pieces. So I feel like we're very, very similar and it makes sense. Another person whose style I really, really enjoy might think is a little bit overrated, but listen to why I like her style first. I love her street style because she's very, relatable like it's realistic like her style is very very realistic i can look at her and be like okay that makes sense you know it's not super edgy to the point that i have to question oh mm, is this a bit too far left for me or a bit too far right for me so she's definitely one of my favorites because of how relatable her style is her outfit pieces like almost clash but in a very harmonious way i feel like she wears things that to an average person might not make sense but when she puts it together it just makes sense and although i wouldn't think to take a whole outfit either from her like i would maybe hayley bieber or kendall she's definitely the person that inspires me the most emily's style is very quirky but it still gives me that early 2000s late 90s feel you see her in very high-waisted bermuda shorts but with a belt that really cinches in her waist and then sometimes you see her with low-rise silk skirts with like a crop top and a jacket over she's definitely someone who's going to break the rules regardless of her proportions and i think it really works for her jasmine to me has had a major style evolution over the last two years she's quickly become one of my favorite models to look at I feel like she epitomizes what quiet luxury is. And I think where a lot of people go wrong where Jasmine doesn't in terms of this specific specific style is that they associate this kind of like classy look with being conservative and that comes across really boring to me. But Jasmine, she does it in such a way that classy doesn't look conservative and boring. So I truly appreciate the versatility of all of these ladies and there's something unique to each of their style. They're never boring and predictable and they all know how to maintain that stylish plus sexy without being extreme and I feel like that's very hard in this extravagant world that we live in now. <laughs> so
So now that I have a good idea of what the vibe and the feel of what my style might be, before I do inventory check on my wardrobe, I want to come back to this topic of the relationship with my body. Understanding my body type and my proportions will really help me to eliminate pieces that might not flatter my body in the way that I would like. This step to me is as important as you want it to be because irrespective of everything that I've mentioned prior, the most important thing when it comes to fashion and style is how you feel. I just found personally over the years that it was beneficial for me to understand my body type and proportions because it just helped me to stop chasing like every trend or style that was out because I knew like certain trousers for example weren't going to be the most flattering on my proportions or figure and I wasn't going to feel comfortable and confident in. Because prior to that I would just buy stuff that wasn't for me I'd wear them once or never wear them and then get rid of them and it was just a waste of money. Analyzing my body, I know I have a long torso, short legs, I've got like an athletic build, I'm short, pretty petite, my shoulders are wide and I have a small bust. You can find out whether you have a long or short torso by doing the hand test. Placing your hand snug at the base of your bust, however many hands width to your waist will determine whether you have a balanced short or long torso. Someone with a balanced torso will have two hands width, someone with a short torso will have less than two hands width and then someone with a long torso will have more than two hands width. You can see here from the side that I have a long torso because it will take me more than two hands width to my waist. So because I have narrow hips and broad shoulders I find that straight leg jeans or trousers fit my frame the best followed by like mom jeans and obviously there's exceptions to the rules which I'm going to show you guys later. I also have long torso and short legs so I find that high rise and mid rise trousers are the most flattering opposed to low rise that really elongates and exaggerates my torso area. High rise jeans shortens the torso area and gives the illusion of longer leg but I think low rise would work if I really wanted it to if I had like wider hips and maybe a bigger bust I would have like balance. I feel like then the low rise would have emphasized my hips and offset my broader shoulders by highlighting like my longer torso in a more flattering way. So you really have to analyze all of your proportions if you want to break the rules. If you had a shorter torso and maybe longer legs then you'd find mid rise and low rise to be more flattering on your frame and you'll find high rise to be a lot more ill-fitting because of that extra material in your torso area. For example Hailey Bieber actually has a short torso and long legs. You can see that when she's wearing low rise trousers her body looks a lot more proportional than if she was wearing high rise. Kendall on the other hand is the opposite and has a long torso and long legs. You can see in comparison that Kendall looks a lot more proportional in her high-waisted trousers in comparison to Hailey. Here Hailey is actually wearing a much more cropped bralette and this creates the illusion of a longer torso whereas Kendall is wearing a cropped vest and she still has space between her trousers and her top to reveal some skin. This is actually a great example of how to break the rules because here Hailey's wearing an extremely cropped top to balance out the fact that she's wearing high waisted jeans. So this is actually showing you it's not that you can't wear something, it's just how you balance out your proportions so that you can wear what you want to wear. So Emily Ratajkowska has a long torso and short legs but she's always wearing low rise trousers, jeans, skirts you name it, she's in a low rise. So if you have these similar proportions, I'd recommend looking at her because she always wears low rise and she does it so well. I do want to mention though that she does have more of a busk so it does balance out her proportions a lot and if you look at a lot of her photos you'll see that she does play on this. Wearing heels and platforms is a great way to elongate your legs if you have short legs. And also playing around with contrast, shapes, textures, colours, patterns are also great ways to create balance. Tonal dressing and playing around with textures and patterns is one of my favourite ways to play around with my proportions, especially if I want to break the rules. Here yeah, Kendall is in a tonal ensemble and what's interesting about this outfit is how patterns, fit and shape plays a huge role in creating a stunning visual balance. The horizontal lines in her top draws your eyes across her upper body and the shape and drape of the top cinches her waist in even more. 
What you have is an illusion of a proportional upper body despite wearing lower rise trousers. The pleats in the trousers gives her lower body more volume. Down to the choice of shoes is absolutely genius. So whoever dressed her really gets an A+. This is how you use patterns, fit, shape, and colors to create visual interest and balance proportions, all the while breaking the rules. Your eyes go exactly where they should. So here, wearing the same color creates balance, so your eyes aren't really drawn to a particular area, but adding shape and contrast to the top half of the body makes that area seem smaller, whilst the lower half seems bigger. Darker colors makes things smaller by drawing less attention, whereas lighter colors makes things bigger by highlighting certain areas. And then the fit of a piece is also very important. It can make an outfit look cheap or expensive. And then for me, like trousers and blazers are like the best things I think to invest in good tailoring in. They're probably the most expensive and sustainable items in your wardrobe and they make great staples and timeless pieces. The longevity of a trousers compared to a top just isn't comparable. You can always find like a good basic top whereas I feel like to find a good well fitted trousers is really hard. So here, although the tailoring on this blazer is immaculate, I think it's too long for my proportions. It hits me at such an awkward place and I feel like it only exaggerates how long my upper body is and how short my legs are. This blazer to me will probably suit somebody with a shorter torso, longer legs by creating like that illusion of a longer torso and shortening the legs. So here now, this is like a cheaper oversized men's blazer and although the quality is not comparable this is actually one of my favorite blazers and I love this because of how it cuts me and where it, how it fits and although it is oversized and quite boxy and emphasizes my shoulders I feel like it does it in such a good way because it literally swallows me up So now that we understand our body type and proportions, we have like a rough idea of the vibe of our style and we have style influences that we can reference. Based off all of the information before, you wanna create a mood board that emulates all of the stuff that you've mentioned. After I made my board, I then identified items, pieces, outfits that were reoccurring. These will basically be some of my core pieces. Looking at my board, it's quite obvious that I have more of an androgynous style. I like to play around on that masculinity and sometimes that femininity, but like balancing the two. And this is definitely something that I always gravitate to. So this is going to be like my core style but I do really, really need to be careful with it because this can come across looking a little bit bummy if I take it to the extreme. It's really a fine line and I need to be careful. <laughs> After you've made your board, made your list of reoccurring items, you want to then go into your wardrobe and do a inventory check. So this is where you go through all of the stuff that you have and tick off anything that's on your list that you already have so that you don't end up purchasing it over and over again. And also if you find pieces in your wardrobe that you do have but the quality isn't there, the fit isn't there, you don't want to tick that off your list. You want to make sure that you replace those items with stuff that is going to fit you well and tick all of the points that we mentioned above. This is also where you're going to identify pieces that don't align with your personal style and you're going to know your personal style from your mood board and all of the things that we met, we spoke about above. And then lastly, you want to make a list of brands that sell similar items to your style and you want to find good quality brands. Buying from quality brands will increase your sustainability and your cost per wear. So for me, the brands that I have listed is Zara. I do like Zara, but I feel like sometimes the quality can be a hit and miss and I feel like they're a bit too popular now and can be a bit overhyped. So I don't feel like the pieces that I'm buying are unique because everybody's wearing them so zara is a hit and miss for me at the moment but i am going to put it down on my list because i do still shop there and i do like some of their items 
Another brand that I quite enjoy is NAD Naked. I don't know how they say it, but I really, really love this brand. It is a European brand. I feel like the items that they have is similar to my style. I also really, really love COS. Recently, I've been really getting into COS. That brings me on to Mango now. I think the quality of Mango's items are really, really good and the prices are reasonable. Moving on to a little bit more pricier brands. I recently discovered this brand called Larizia. I quite like them because they seem to always have some type of discount. And then the row, I mean the row is again my style to a T. Pieces are just tailored, very well made, gorgeous pieces. I don't own anything from there because I'm not in that tax bracket yet but when I do best believe I will be there. <laughs> The Frankie shop, I feel like everybody knows the Frankie shop. They are well known for like their oversized pieces, blazers, coats. Another brand that I really like is Hen. They are quite new to me. I think I found them about, about a year ago and I quite like their pieces, so yeah. Another brand is Haver Studio. I know I've probably butchered that, but I really like their pieces because they make a lot of tailored skirts, blazers, trousers. And then last but not least, the ultimate, House of CB, I can't not put that in there when it comes to like really feminine, girly, woman, sexy pieces. House of CB is it for me and their quality is impeccable. I hope this video was informative, helpful and entertaining and this is probably going to be a three or two part video, I'll see, because I really want to go through my wardrobe with you guys and do an inventory check and then maybe have a mini haul. So thank you guys so much for watching again. Please don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy it or you took something away from it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in another one.